Welcome to the Bonfi Stanton Performance Studio here at Kuvo Jazz. I'm Arturo Gomez, very happy to welcome back to Denver pianist and educator Andy Nevola leading his Andy Nevola Quartet. And they're about to entertain you, and I hope that you enjoy the performance they're about to share with you.
Once again, I'm Arturo Gomez, and I'm here with Andy Nevela after a sizzling set. Andy, thanks so much for coming back. It was great to see you. You were here about a year ago, and now you're back, and a very nice performance that you shared with us. Well, thanks for having us again. You guys have been so wonderful in letting us come back and play. Andy, you're currently the director of, I believe, of jazz studies at Jacksonville State University in Alabama. Not Florida, Jacksonville, right, but there's right. another Jacksonville in Alabama. Yeah. Well, yeah, people get that mixed up, mixed up a lot, but Jacksonville State, Alabama. Okay. And how long have you been there? I'm in my 13th year, if you can imagine that. Oh, that's, you've accomplished a lot and done a lot since you left us here in the Front Range, where you spend a lot of time. You uh, were part of the founding of the group Medianoche with our longtime salsa con jazz host and former on-air personality as well, the bassist Jimmy Trujillo. May he rest in peace after prematurely leaving us way too young. Yeah, um, those guys uh, gave me my foundation, and I owe a lot to them. I see. And Victor Nieves as, as well was. Oh, that, Victor uh, Nieves, the, the conga player, yeah. outstanding conguero, yes. And then Francisco and the guys, you know, they took me under their wing and, and kind of kicked my butt for many years. <laughs> well, that's how you need to have it done in order to improve yourself. You, you can't be lackadaisical because it takes a lot of hard work, which is why I, I always appreciate musicians because I know the hard work and dedication they had to have for the love of the instrument they play in order to master it and improve on it and play it to the enjoyment of the audience. Yeah, you're not going to find that in any book on how to play. They gave me a, a stack of CDs a month. and Interesting. I just buried myself in those. What one or a few of the CDs they gave you, would you say, hey, this really inspired me or I gathered a lot uh, from this particular recording? Eddie Palmieri, uh, La Perfecta Dos. Yeah. And then he had several of the Latin jazz with Brian Lynch and Conrad Irwig. Oh, yes. Uh, Arite and all of those um, were the first. And then they introduced me to other pianists like Papa Luca. Sonora Ponceña. All those guys. And those guys are just amazing. Wow. And then it kind of just grew from there into some modern modern folks. Did you always have an affinity for Latin music or did you start out in another field of music first? I was always drawn to the rhythms, and on piano, it's, it's, it's exciting because uh, most salsa pianists are closet percussionists, and in the salsa world, Latin jazz world, you play that role, very rhythmic, um, and to me, that's just a lot of fun, and I've always been drawn to it from the very first Tito Puente Latin jazz record I heard um, in high school, and I was like, what is that? I want to do that. And you attended high school here in the Denver area? No, I actually, um, I was born in Aurora. Right. But then we moved, I attended high school in Idaho, Boise. Oh, Idaho. in Idaho, in Boise. Yeah. Oh. So then I came back to do the college. Interesting. Yeah, because you went to Bo uh, CU Boulder and UNC Green, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yep. Right. That's wow. what got me back here. Wow. Boise, Idaho. That's on my bucket list to go because my father was Basque. Oh, yeah. And Boise, Idaho has the largest Basque community uh, outside of the Basque country in Spain. Yeah, there's a whole block. There's a Basque center. There's the restaurant. Um, we would go there on our set breaks. Yeah, yeah. and they celebrate all the Basque holidays yeah, there throughout was, the year. Yeah. Yeah. And in the... You know, up in the mountains is where all the sheep were, and you could, you could right, drive right. up and look at the things. Yeah. And you're also the curator for the Jacksonville Annual Jazz Festival. Yeah, I, I started that my first year. We're in our 13th year, and in the spring we have, um, trying to remember, from the Count Basie Orchestra, uh, the vocalist. Oh, Carmen Bradford. Carmen Bradford. Um, I was fortunate to perform with her a few years back, and 
we reconnected, and she's going to come sing with our jazz band. Great. Well, Carmen Bradford, with the Count Basie Orchestra under the direction of Scotty Barnhart, they played for us at our Live at the Vineyard series we do in August two years ago, uh, and people still talking about their performance. Yeah, they were she, an I, amazing band. She's a great vocalist. Yeah, I've got to, I got to play with her with the Pensacola Symphony with the rhythm section in front of the orchestra, and it, it was like she was lifted off the stage mm -hmm. playing some of that stuff. It was just amazing. Okay, so while you're back here in the Denver area this time, you'll be going up to the University of Wyoming and be doing a clinic, and you'll be performing there as well. Yeah, we're heading heading up there to perform with their big band on a concert Thursday night, and we'll do a, a clinic on that music earlier that day and rehearse with them, and then we'll play a short set after we play with their big band. Um, and then we'll all, we're also going to play a dazzle before that. Right, right. Uh, and up in the University of Wyoming, our good friend, fellow pianist, Ben Markley, he also has an outstanding drummer percussionist that's very knee-deep into Latin music, Andy Wheelock. Yeah, he's the one that kind of arranged it for us to go up there. I see. He's going to join us on a couple of things. Oh, yeah, well... That's a, a great coupling between you and your band and Andy because he's firmly entrenched into the Latin music scene. And uh, are you planning any time soon to make another recording? Uh, yeah, we're actually uh, finishing up um, our latest recording. Mm -hmm. um, some of the songs that we, we played today are going to be on that, and we're tweaking, tweaking them. We have some that haven't been heard by anybody yet. Great. Um, we have a couple of guest artists. Uh, the guitarist Neff Irizari mm -hmm. is, is playing on a couple of those, and uh, hopefully we can have that out this winter. And I guess it will come out on several platforms, you know, uh, the usual, you know, uh, Spotify and YouTube, Amazon, digitally. Will there be any physical copies, perhaps maybe even vinyl since it's yes. so much in demand? <laughs> yes, we are going to do, do some vinyl um, because when we go, we'll go over and play in Europe. Right. And they are just hungry for for that. So right. we will make some vinyl and the first ones will come here for you guys. Well, of course, uh, you just answered <laughs> my next question. Of course, when once it's released, you'll be sending it uh, to Kuvo so yeah. we can debut it and play it as part of our regular uh, music lineup throughout the week. A absolutely, and vinyl does sound better than streaming. Yeah, MP3s. absolutely. You get the full spectrum, yeah, you know, it's... which is why so many of the young kids have gone on to vinyl because they realize when they listen to digital music, it's, more mid-range than high and low, and when they listen to the record, they get the full spectrum. Yeah, it fills the room. It's worth getting a good turntable and a good set of speakers. Right, and that's the key, a good turntable, and you have to take care of the vinyl. It yep. requires more maintenance than a CD used to or a download does, but it's worth the effort. Yeah, you have to get the cleaner and take care of it before you put it back in the sleeve. Always put it back in the sleeve. Right, right, right. Well, Andy Neville has been great chatting with you after a wonderful performance. We wish you continued success. We look forward to receiving your new recording when it comes out early next year. And hopefully you'll be back again next year so that you can play for us and play around town again. Oh, well, we love coming back. It's great to come back and, and see old friends and get in touch with roots. And it kind of makes you reflective of everything that's happened. Right. Okay, again, my guest, Andy Nevela. I'm Mike Tudor Gomez for Kuvo Jazz, your oasis in the city.